Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Lark and I just want to come back to give you guys an update on what's been going on with my MCAT and my pre-med journey. So I know I told you guys I would update you in like a week or two about whether or not I quit my job, but my um, MCAT studying was got so intense and I was just so into it that I just didn't have enough time to film a video. Um, and my exam is tomorrow, so you know, I finally had some free time to, you know, since today is like, you know, rest day kind of to film and let you guys know like what I've been up to, how I've been studying and what's been going on since my last video. So to update you, yes, I did end up quitting my job. Um, it ended up being like this whole thing that I won't really get into, but um, yeah, people just, you know, may say they're rooting for you and they're actually not rooting for you. Um, so I ended up having to quit my job. I decided that I'm not, even though it was just a matter of like two, a two week difference, I was like, those two weeks are the difference between a 505 and a 510, a 499 and a 505. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not willing to risk that. Like I need every point I can get. I want every point I can get. And like, you know, I need to make the best decision I can make to maximize my chance of getting a high score because this is my third time taking it. Like I don't want to take it again. So I ended up quitting my job. Right now I'm unemployed, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, and my exam is tomorrow, so I'm really excited. I study pretty much seven days a week uh, for a month and a half, close to two months, I think. <clears throat> Every single day, just starting from 8 a.m. to roughly like 6 p.m. ish. Sometimes I did go further in the night. Sometimes I did go uh, earlier than 5 p.m. Just depending on how fast I got things done or how in depth I needed to go into review or you know, uh, go over a certain topic that I was struggling with. Um, so that's about that. So I just want to talk to you guys about, you know, some of the things that I did to study, some of the tips I learned, um, and some techniques I used to help, you know, better get a grasp of what the MCAT is testing for and how they want you to take the test. So like I said, I studied from roughly 8 a.m. to like 5, 6 p.m. every day. I did, at first I started off doing four sets of problems and I gradually increased it in terms of the number of problems I was doing and the number of sets. So in the beginning, I think I was doing 20 questions per set and four sets a day. Um, and then, and after each set, I reviewed um, wrong answers and then, um, I think I increased it to 40 questions, still four sets a day. Um, and then I, towards the end, like now, I increased it to still 40 questions, but five sets. Um, and each time I had like a certain time limit that I was trying to get to. So in the beginning, I was trying to uh, answer those 20 questions in 40 minutes. And I think when I bumped it up to 40 questions per set, then I gave myself, or my sister gave myself an hour to complete the uh, questions. And of course, you know, sometimes I went above it, but the goal was to try and answer all the questions within a certain time to prepare myself for the time uh, constraints that I'm gonna experience on the actual exam. So that's like what I did in terms of like practice problems. I didn't really focus too much on content just because I my content was pretty solid. And even as my sister, you know, was helping, she was the one I studied with, she is a recent, or recent-ish MD graduate. So she, everything that I did, every every technique and studying skill I like learned was from her and what she learned through her years in medical school and other programs that she's been through. Um, so I didn't, like I was saying, I didn't focus too much on content because we both had come to agreements that I like, you know, I had my content down pretty solid. Of course, you can't know everything. However, mine was good enough that like we could focus most so on uh, test taking skills and I definitely 100% agree that that was definitely my issue after she taught me everything she taught me I was like man I definitely could have done so much better on my previous exam had I known these skills so something she taught me was one during review of wrong answers after doing my problem sets and even after doing um, practice exams you create a smart book so what this smart book is, is, you know, any notebook you have, an empty notebook, you have, you know, a blank page, right? On the left side of the page, I don't know if you guys can see, one side of the page, you create questions. So you don't copy 
the questions word for word from what you got wrong on the problem you recreate your own question based on like the answer or the um the explanation and then you create an answer to match that so the right side was the answers so for example i said what happens when a red blood cell matures my answer was they expel their nucleus and other organelles um and then another question i created was do red blood cells contain mitochondria no and that kind of corresponds to what the previous question was because they expel all their other organelles so with this smart book you want to get as detailed as possible with the questions let's say you know the question was super simple that you got wrong on your problem set you know let's say you got wrong that uh insulin is secreted from the pancreas something like that whatever you want to create as many questions as possible that way you never get anything dealing with insulin or the pancreas wrong ever again so if you can create five ten questions out of that that's what you're supposed to do so a lot of times i had questions like five or six questions for one pro problem i got wrong on my problem set like i know i got one wrong for two three vpg um and as i was creating the problems i was like oh my god i remember this from biochemistry in college but i still went and created like five six questions because it didn't take i didn't remember that until i started you know reviewing so to make sure i never forgot that wrong again i created multiple questions so this was a huge, 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 huge thing in my studying. I'm so, so grateful she taught me this. And you review your smart book every single day. And eventually your smart book will be like pages long. I mean, I have two now because I ended up filling all the pages in this. Not completely. I have other notes in this, but I ended up having to use another one to fill up more questions. So your smart book is going to be key to reviewing concepts that you kind of were unsure about or you just needed to you know, make sure you solidify that, you know, you never forget it again. So again, you left side is create questions, right side, the answers to the questions, you review this every single day. And you'll find that you'll start to like recall things a lot more quickly. And you'll start to be able to make generalizations for other things or other concepts related to what you created. Um, so this was a really, really excellent test taking or excellent study skill that she gave me or taught me. Um, another thing she taught me is during your problem set, so when you're reviewing a problem, do not just go and pick anything just because you think you know it. You're like, oh yeah, you know, the pancreas secretes insulin, the pancreas secretes glucagon. No. You are given four answer choices, A, B, C, and D. You need to go through each single one and eliminate it until you have two possible choices left and then you choose your final answer from that. So what I mean, let's say you have you're looking at the screen you have your question first thing you do is read the question don't even read the passage because a lot of times you can save yourself time by just reading the question because sometimes the questions aren't even related to the passage it's just a standalone or it's just something that requires previous knowledge or you can just scan one section of the the passage like oh it says based on figure two great you just need to go to figure two so always read the question first then you only preview answer choice A, B, and C. So I know on the test, there's nothing you can really use to cover the screen to get rid of D, but you know, while you're studying, you can you know, like move the cursor around or cover it up with a piece of paper and then get in the habit of priming yourself to just look at A, B, and C first. So you look at A, B, and C, you eliminate one. And you don't just like, you know, eliminate it and be like, all right, move on. You talk to yourself and you literally be like, okay, answer A is right because this, so I'm gonna keep it. Answer B is right because this, I'm going to keep it. Not too sure about C or mm, I'm pretty sure C is incorrect because of this. I'm eliminating C. Great. Once you've eliminated one, now you introduce D. So now you reviewed your choices that you have left. You know, you kept A, B, and now you have D. Now you eliminate another one. So let's say you read D and you're like, oh, no, this, this makes a good amount of sense. I think I want to keep D. And you reread A and you're like, oh, no, I can see a correlation between B and D. I'm going to get rid of A. Cool. Now all you have left is B and D. Now that you've uh, narrowed it down to 50-50, you make your choice. This, that skill is definitely like one of the main reasons why I started to see like my progress shoot up. Because once you actually sit there and reason with yourself and actually like analyze what the question is asking you and the answer choices they give you, you start to notice patterns. You start to notice why they throw in this thing and not that thing and you start to see why certain choices are incorrect or why a certain choice is correct and a lot of times there are patterns 
in the um, answer choices. Them can't last th through a pattern. So A, B, and D are very, very similar. And C has nothing to do with A, B, and D. So you might choose C because it's different from A, B, and D. Because if you get rid of A, you gotta get rid of D and you gotta get rid of B. So that only leaves C. So, you know, try and look for patterns. Always, always, always reason before you eliminate something and leave yourself two definite options. Or even if you're not too sure, at least two solid options where you're like, okay, I have a 50 50 chance of getting this right. And then, you know, hopefully you choose the right one. And if you reason well, and if you recall your knowledge well enough, or the passage well enough, you probably will get it right. And another thing that I learned was do not change your answer unless the sky is blue. Meaning, if you are not 100% sure that C is correct and you originally chose B, you better keep B. Because a lot of the times, your brain access, you know, you encode things when you study or whatever. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, pull that information, but sometimes it's not. But even when it is hard to pull that information, you know, your brain kind of has an idea of what something is because it recalls it from something else. So you not might you yourself might not be able to consciously recall that information. But when you see it, your brain is kind of like, huh, there's something about this that, you know, I remember. And that what that's what made you choose B. So unless the sky is blue, unless you are certain that the other answer choice is correct after you reread it or you reread the passage and something primed you in the passage to want to change your answer keep your answer because a lot of times your first answer is the correct answer like you, that that inner gut that information in your brain that your brain thinks you know it remembers from uh whatever you read in the past is usually right so keep that sky is blue unless the sky is blue do not change your answer make sure you eliminate answers until you have 50 50 and uh read the question first so you can save yourself time so those are like the main techniques that I, uh, test taking skills that I worked on. And I'm telling y'all, my practice exam scores shot up. There was a point in time where I wasn't even getting above a 500 on my practice exam scores. Man, these past three practice exams that I took, baby, I was hitting above 505, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like I was hitting 510s, 5 this five and that. And it's very exciting. I know people are getting 520s or whatever, but for me, someone who was struggling to even reach the 500 threshold, this was super, super exciting and break and a breakthrough for me because I was like, I finally figured out my issue. I, it's not that I didn't know the information, it's that I didn't have test taking skills. And unfortunately, that's not something that you learn in college a lot, especially as a science major. Um, in undergrad, you know, we mostly memorize. So um, that's basically all I did while I studied. I, you know, studied from 8 a.m. to 5, 6 p.m. I did sets and sets and sets. I went over incorrect uh, questions all the time. I created new questions in my smart book. I reviewed my smart book every day. Um, Saturdays, which was day six for me, um, I did practice exams. And then day seven, which was Sunday, I reviewed the practice exam and still used the same technique, which was creating questions from my smart book. And again, reviewed my smart book every single night. Um, I did throw in content review here and there, but it wasn't anything serious. It was just if I felt like there is a concept that I wasn't really getting too much, I would pull out my um, my um, MCAT review books. I had the Princeton review books and just try to go through that and see if I can just go straight to the topic that I was going through and just re-up on that and just try and get more clarification on the topic that I was confused about or wasn't too sure about. Other than that, like I didn't really focus too much on content review. Um, and the only other content review I focused on was Pathways. I had to, it was so hard for me, but I finally got it down. I memorized glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, pentose, phosphate pathway, uh, gluconeogenesis, finally got those down. Um, and amino acids, I had to memorize those. I, I already had those memorized, but it was more so the structures. Um, and then equations. So that's pretty much all I did um, to study. I studied seven days a week. I didn't have any break days at this point. I honestly couldn't afford that because I only had a month and a half to study. And, um, I, you know, I had to go hard. You know what I'm saying? A month and a half is not long. Thankfully, I already had the content down, so it was enough to get me going. But it's still, you know, I had every minute counted. And I'm so glad that I quit my job because I was able to really focus and dedicate seven days a week for almost two months to straight studying. So I know for sure that it's going to reflect in my score, or at least I hope, but uh, I'm, I'm quite confident in it just because based on my practice exam scores and my, even just my score from doing my practice sets, I saw a significant increase. So that's all for today, guys. See you guys.